I didn't expect my debut to be interrupted by a fire alarm right as the mirror part of the uh, is starting. I have to say that was quite a shocker to sit down and prepare to fall asleep and instead see the stage manager go, get off the stage. And I thought, okay, I put the letter down and we exit the stage. Um, and yeah, we had a nice half an hour where we thought, what are we going to do? We can't close the open air over the stage anymore, which is what happens when the fire alarm goes off. And um, I think the fire alarm actually created um, a scenario where we just all thought, okay, well, the worst has happened. Now let's just dance and enjoy it. And I think once we got going again, it was a really special performance. I felt from every single person, everybody was so present and just so happy to be doing it rather than another go at it. Um, Tatiana is for me, the most special thing that I've done because it is the role that I have always wanted to do. I remember doing the polonaise myself and just running to the wing to sit down and watch every single cast and thinking, I love what she's doing there. That's working. That's not working. And I wonder, will I get to try it one day? And I have to say in the GP, I had a moment standing there in that red dress before the curtain went up for the third act. And I actually thought, this is one of those dream come true moments. And I often realize things in retrospect, but it was one of those moments where I stood there and I thought, this is real. And you made it. And now just enjoy it and channel all those ballerinas that you've looked up to in the past into a new truth. I've definitely thought that there could be more ends to Onyegin, the ballet. Um, but I have read it and reread it and thought about it and put into the context of that time, there really is no other end than the one that has been made. She has to stay in that marriage, otherwise she will lose everything. She will lose her husband, her place in society, and they will not be happy together. But I think if you would put the characters into a different context of a different time, where society has a completely different um, acceptance of love and of relations and of several relationships, I definitely think that her heart belongs to Onyegin and that's where she would have gone if she could. I didn't expect to become a dancer because nobody in my family has anything to do with art or dance or culture. Uh, it was literally just a coincidence that I started to follow in my cousin's footsteps and got spotted and entered in the ballet school and I never stopped. I think one of the most memorable things that I was told in training was actually how my teacher related to us, that she said, when a student comes in and is willing to give it their all, so will I. It doesn't matter if it's good or bad or the most talented student or the least talented student, what matters is what you put into it, the effort and the integrity that you put into your work. My auditioning process uh, was a little bit unusual. I was injured for probably 75% of the time I attended the Royal Ballet School. Uh, I didn't do first year at all and got moved up to second year where I did about half and I got injured again. And then towards the end of the third year, I was dancing, but not fully, so I couldn't actually audition. I did a private audition here at the Norwegian National Ballet and was offered an apprenticeship. And I also did, I tried to do some auditions around, but my body just uh, wasn't really up for it. So I was actually extremely lucky that they, they knew me from eight years old and had seen something in me and said, you know what, we're gonna give you a chance and then you'll show us later. My strain of injuries started with the final performance here in the ballet school where I hurt my hip pretty badly and nobody really knew what it was. So I spent about a year in the Royal Ballet School just watching without a diagnose, but I could not move my leg very well. And then it started on my left leg also, uh, still not really diagnosed, but they seemed to think that I'd grown so fast that all the tendons and muscles were kind of loose at my, in my pelvis. And I just had to wait for them to reattach themselves. 
which is what I did. And then I came back and then the stress fractures started in my metatarsals and in my shins. And coming back from that, I realized I could no longer feel my feet when I danced really, really hard stuff. And then later found out that I have a chronic exertional compartment syndrome in my calves, which means that my fascia is too tight so that I lose the blood circulation to my feet when the muscles are pumped really hard. So I had to have a fascial release surgery where they cut open all the compartments of my calf muscles. And then after that, I had to do the same in my ankles a year later with the tarsal tunnel got stuck and then had four months to make it to Swan Lake from a wheelchair, which was my debut as Odette. I think definitely more of an Odette in terms of the movement quality. I was quite surprised actually to think that I was more of an Odette because in my personality and I really love playing the villain in many things. I find that often much more interesting and more fun and there's a lot more to play with than just being good or happy. But when I actually stood there and I did it, maybe because of the movement quality of Odette, that it just translates much more to my body with the softness and the suppleness and the, the purity. I actually thought Odile was a real challenge to me because my body didn't quite understand the language. And it's actually one of the reasons I really, really want to do it again, because I felt I had some unfinished business there that Odile happened, but I didn't think it was quite right, actually, what I did back then. So maybe in the future it will change, but uh, for now, I think Odette is my half. <laughs> well, in terms of my role, I have to say Hedda Gobbler, which of course I was part of creating and it feels like my role because the steps came out of my body uh, and I've been a part of the process from day one. I think when you use dance movements to tell a story or to appeal to something deeper than just look at how pretty my foot is or how many turns I can do, it becomes much more relevant and it's something that touches an audience much more. When I watch performances, I always remember how I was touched, not how many turns somebody did. And that is something I try to remind myself of when I lose myself to thinking, oh, the technique is not there or you should do better, is to think, but what is important? It is what you give and the sincerity of your performance and that you actually open your heart to the audience and give them a piece of you.
of the ballets that I haven't danced yet, Manon is definitely high up on my list. And I also have a couple of things that I would call unfinished business where I got injured in the process and never managed to do the piece. Uh, for instance, in the middle, somewhat elevated, I made it up until the day before the stage calls, before my foot broke. Um, so I never got to do it and I would really love to have another go at it and actually the same with voluntaries. Um, that was the last thing we performed before Corona started the show. Well, the curtain never came up that day. Well, outside of ballet, uh, we also have to be people. <laughs> and my hobby is actually baking. I really, really love baking, which started from me finding out that I have celiac disease, meaning I'm allergic to gluten and autoimmune disease, which was the reason why I had so many stress fractures and borderline osteoporosis when I was very young, uh, because I couldn't absorb any nutrients that I was eating. So when I was faced with not getting anything nice to eat anymore, I thought, well, I have to make it myself. So that's actually how it started. And then, of course, because I'm a perfectionist and I love things to be beautiful, I also got into the more finer sides of baking with French patisserie and macaron and other things. So I really enjoy making art at home in a way. And it's a good way for me to relax because I, if I'm stressed about work, I can't just sit down. I need to then do something with my hands or put my mind onto something else. And then having baking projects to plan and to execute and eat also helps with the relaxation. Looking back now, I, as horrible as it was, and I still wouldn't have wanted to change my journey because it makes you who you are. And it even, I mean, I had two chances to do Onyegin before, where once I got injured and the second time Corona happened. But looking at it, I was really happy that I got held back because I feel it's a role where you need to have lived a little. And if I had done that part at 25, you can sort of make it look the way, it, but you can feel whether someone has felt those emotions or, yeah. or not. And I think that sometimes getting there first is not necessarily the goal. Yeah.